So you're working with some data in Python and you want to make some visualizations. Well, I've got news for you. There's a lot of data visualization packages out there. I mean, a lot. It can be a little overwhelming, but no need to worry. I'm going to step through every single package known to man. Okay, just the main packages used for plotting in Python. And by the end of this video, you should have an idea of what each of them do and how you can use them. All right, let's start checking out packages. That doesn't sound right. And here we are in our data viz Kaggle notebook. Up first is the OG of plotting in Python. Yeah, you know it, matplotlib. This package was initially released in 2003. Were you born in 2003? Because it's so old, a lot of other things are built on it. And there's a ton you can do. First, the imports. Import matplotlib, import pyplot as plt. This is just how you do it. Let's say we want to plot a line plot. Looks pretty nice. Kind of boring, but nice. Want to up the stakes? Why not your standard scatter plot? Just a few lines of code and we have colored dots. Ooh. But what if you say, Rob, I hate circles. I got the solution for you. Matplotlib has tons of functionality. You can change the points of the plot. You can do a ton of stuff. But Rob, I want to do some statistics. Well, built into matplotlib, you can make a histogram super easy. Look at these aardvark lengths. Oh wait, no, it's fake data. <laughs> But this is just the surface of what matplotlib can do. It's basically a pen and paper for plotting. You can make almost anything. Check out this awesome heat map mesh grid. Not impressed with matplotlib? I created this function that creates an entire football field. If you're not impressed, I don't know what will impress you. So to summarize, Matplotlib, one of the oldest libraries in Python. Customization out the wazoo. Tons of other packages are built off of it, but the downsides are, it's hard to learn at first, complex plots are gonna be code heavy, and even though it has the functionality, it's not really meant for interactive plots. Next up, we have Seaborn. Little known fact, did you know that Seaborn was named after the character from West Wing? Samuel Norman Seaborn? That's why we import it as SNS. Seaborn is great if you want to make some plots out of the box for statistical analysis. Stats major. And what's the distribution? You're just p-hacking. Here we can use the Seaborn rel plot function to show the difference between two groups in our data set. Wow. Not as much code as in matplotlib. Switch the style type to line and we have a beautiful line plot. Are those confidence intervals I see? One of the great things about Seaborn is you can look at the difference between different categories in your data without having to actually change the data itself. Time saver. Check out this swarm plot. Each stop represents an observation in our group and it's split between different days of the week. Nifty. And what about a violin plot? Well, a violin plot's a great way to see the distribution compared between groups and even split within a group. Interested in just a normal old bar plot? We got you covered. Seaborn can make those too. With confidence intervals? Want to go beyond just a normal boring scatter plot? Seaborn can do a joint plot. You can see distributions on the X and Y axis of each different grouping and them colored in between. That's pretty cool. And one of my personal favorites is the pair plot. Have a bunch of numeric features that you want to compare. You have KDE plots on the diagonals, scatter plots everywhere else. What more could you ask for? Oh, coloring by the different groups. It's got that too. And it may not seem like a big deal, but in Seaborn, one of the features I love is that you can use the hue variable to add color to your plots. So to summarize, Seaborn, standard plots for statistical analysis, 
easy to use out of the box. It is built on matplotlib, so it's really just a fancy matplotlib. There's much less ability to customize. Next up, Bokeh, or Boca? Is it Bokeh or Boca? Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm just gonna call it Bokeh. When we import Bokeh, we can set it up to work in a notebook just like that. Super simple. Bokeh specializes in interactive plots. Your standard line plot here, ooh. But wait, I can select things. I can move it around. This is amazing. One line not enough for you? How about multiple lines? Very cool. Okay, let's pick it up a notch with bokeh layouts. We can put multiple plots side by side. But it goes even deeper. We can plot two things at the same time linked. Look with this code. If I select here, it also selects it on the other side. A lot of cool stuff you can do with these linked plots. With a little bit more work, you can make some pretty amazing plots. In this plot, we've added a bunch of circles, but the size of the circles and the color are based on features in our data. But wait, there's more. Interactive plots are just the start with Bokeh. You can actually interact with the data live by adding things like a range slider. Check out this code, a bunch of dots, but we can filter based on the slider. Want to change the cir circle size on the fly? Why not? The world's your oyster. And of course, the standard bar plot is always there if you need it. We create a figure and use the bar to make something beautiful. Mmm, looking at this plot makes me hungry. <laughs> Once you become a pro with bokeh, you can write really long plots like this that show unemployment numbers throughout the years. I'm not gonna lie, this heat map is pretty beautiful. And you can even use Bokeh to display those awesome Network X graphs that you've been creating. Whoa, when you hover over a circle, you can actually see what it's linked to. Awesome. So to summarize, Bokeh, interactive plots, almost infinite ways you can customize Bokeh plots. For me, Bokeh reminds me of the matplotlib equivalent, but for interactive plots. The downside though, is it's like matplotlib, so it requires a lot of code. And the time has come, we're gonna talk about Plotly Express. I know you've been holding your breath, so just let it go now. You can breathe. I'm really actually surprised Plotly Express only has 657 GitHub stars. Go and give it a star. Importing Plotly Express is as simple as import as PX. Plotly Express, like Bokeh, allows you to create interactive plots, but the difference is they're a lot easier to create. Using Plotly Express Scatter, we can create a scatter plot with just a few lines of code. Oh, look at these petal widths. But I want a grid of plots, you say. Well, look no further. Just provide a facet column and facet row variable, and you've got yourself a grid of scatter plots. Ooh. What about line plots? We got you covered. Ah, check out Australia and New Zealand. Oh, Australia is winning. All this in just one line of code? Sign me up. And it wouldn't be complete without some bar plots. Just like Bokeh, it's fully interactive, so we can turn things off if we don't like it. Oh, but I can't turn them both off because I kind of don't want to see this plot at all. Remember Seaborn's pair plot? Well, Plotly Express has the scatter plot matrix. Not a lot of code here. And we see the comparison. So this has the upside of being interactive but I tend to prefer Seaborn for this type of plot. There are also a handful of custom plots that are just gorgeous. Check out this parallel coordinates plot. And one of my personal favorites, the parallel categories plot. Huh, different groupings and how they link. Oh, you can hover over it. Amazing. I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm sold. 
Here's a perfect example of using Plotly Express to make a scatter plot. Colors, sizes, all of them depending on the data. Whoa, let's only look at Oceania. Australia and New Zealand again? And for those of you who prefer pie charts, the sunburst plot is sort of like a pie chart, kind of. Just don't make pie charts. Just like Seaborn again, Plotly Express can do different comparison between categories. Check out these violin plots. Not too much code here to create it too. And something you might not always use, but if you ever have a data set with latitude and longitude, the scatter map box function can make some beautiful maps. Wow. Two dimensions not enough for you? Well, we can go 3D with the scatter 3D plot with Plotly Express. I feel like I'm in the matrix. So to summarize, Plotly Express, two thumbs up for interactive plots. It's kind of like Seaborn, but interactive. And those maps, I mean, I don't know what else to say. If you're not impressed by that map, just close the video right now. Just close it. I don't want you here. Also similar to Seaborn, it's gonna be hard to customize your plots. There is the Plotly backend and Dash, but that's for another video. The next two libraries are slightly lesser known. So let's talk about Plot9. If you've used R before, you probably know ggplot too. It can make some gorgeous charts. So Plot9 is basically ggplot in Python. The way you write the plots is different than anything else that I've seen, but it's very similar to what you would do in R. So if you're familiar with R, this might be the package for you. We got scatter plots, with regression lines and standard error. Can't be beat. One thing I gotta say is the default colors in Plot9 and ggplot are really nice. With these few lines of code, you can make this bar plot with some lines. Hey, check out. Wanna do some analysis of Greek letters? You can make a pretty bar plot. Just a few lines of code. I like it. So to summarize, Plot9, Basically ggplot2, positives, the plots are pretty. The syntax is a little unique, but if you're used to R, you might like it. Downside is, if you're not used to it, it takes a little bit of work to understand. And I gotta say, the docs aren't that great. So if you're looking to do anything custom, you might be up creek without a paddle. Let's talk about Altair. To be honest, I haven't used Altair that much, and I don't really understand why it's different, but it is different. And maybe if you understand it, you can explain it to me. So the positives are, the positives are that it has declarative visualization and the negatives are that it has declarative visualization. And last up, we have pandas. You didn't think I would get through a video without talking about pandas, did you? That's right, pandas can do plots. Just take your data frame, use the plot method, and you can make a, make a cool visualization like this in milliseconds. But Rob, you say, this is just matplotlib. I know, but it saves you time because it's already in pandas. Show me a scatter plot. There it is. Pandas can even do box plots. These leave something to be desired. Area plots are actually pretty cool and I use these a lot. It's basically a line plot filled in underneath. So there you have it. As quickly and hopefully entertainingly as I could, I showed you every Python package commonly used for visualization. If I missed one, please let me know in the comments below. We talked about matplotlib, seaborn, bokeh, plotly express, plot9, altair, and pandas. Everything you would ever ask for for plotting with Python. My name is Rob. I'm a data scientist and Kaggle Grandmaster. If you enjoyed this video, please, pretty please, subscribe and like the video too. Oh, also you can find me on Twitch where I stream time to time. Okay, that's it. See ya, bye. Using Plotly Explet... Using pro Plotly Explet...
using Plotly 